in 2017, Serious Sam The Last Hope was Crow Team's first go at breaking into the VR market. This was around the same time that Bethesda was doing the same thing for their games. However, whereas Bethesda would simply port their already pre-existing games into VR, Crow Team would make an entirely new game for their VR debut. However, despite being very positively received, the game kind of flew under the radar in the following years, and I'd attribute that mostly to the fact that VR is a very niche market. Not everybody's willing to dish out $500 just to scream at kids in Among Us or play Gorilla Tag. So let's take a look back at Serious Sam VR The Last Hope and see how it holds up. As soon as you start the game, you're given a little exposition. You're an EDF recruit on the battle cruiser Saratoga. Every mission that you undergo is a simulation of a mission that Sam has already done in the past. When you're finally inside, you're given a few things to choose from. For the sake of this overview, I've segmented the video as follows. Feel free to use the timestamps if necessary. Starting with the campaign, you can go to five different planets starting with Earth. Above the planet, you can see these little metal icons. They represent the difficulty you've played on and if you've managed to beat the planet without dying. Once you press Accept Mission, you're given your difficulty options, ranging from the standard Tourist up to Sirius. Once you beat a level on a certain difficulty, you'll be rewarded with a weapon and skill point. The weapon points increase weapon damage, and skill points allow you to unlock power-ups in the skill tree. These power-ups range from your standard serious damage, slow time, and invulnerability, up to more eccentric gadgets like a drone squad, airstrike, or a domesticated spider army. A lot of these would later be inspiration for Sirius M4's gadgets. Moving on to the arena, you can choose from different maps where you'll be put into a wave-based situation. The difficulty ranges from 1 to 20. When you beat all the waves, you're given a minor weapon upgrade point. This weapon upgrade point correlates directly with the difficulty setting, so if I chose a difficulty of 5, I'd get 5 minor upgrade points. And finally, Endless Survival. This is just straight up classic survival mode which is linked to the daily challenges, which in and of itself is just a leaderboard. The only other thing to note here is the multiplayer customization, of which you can only choose Sam and Sirius Sammy. Yes, this game has multiplayer, so if you ever find anybody online, have fun blasting aliens together. That pretty much concludes everything of interest on the Saratoga. The ship itself is functionally a hub area, however it does look a little bit dead inside. Which is a shame considering how cool it looked on the exterior. It's not that bad though considering you're going to be spending most of your time blasting aliens on different planets. Where else would we go but Egypt? Before I get into the levels, I'd like to acknowledge the chronology of this game. The Last Hope is canon to the main series, happening sometime before the events of Sirius Sam 4, so we'll get mentions about previously seen characters like Professor Stein. I'd also like to point out the one and only inaccuracy, the laser gun, now named the laser cannon, doesn't overheat like in Sirius Sam 4. This version of the laser gun shouldn't exist yet, but that's enough rambling about lore, so let's get back to Egypt. Earth's first level sees you protecting Professor Stein as he's looking for some ancient tablets relating to the time lock. Before you start on every planet, you're given one free power-up. After you select one, you pick your guns and begin the wave. Every enemy that has a traditional ranged attack like clear and beheaded rocketeers will have their projectiles fire at you considerably slower than normal so you can shoot them out of the air. While you're fighting, you might notice EDF supply drops coming down. If you aim at them and press the fire button, Sam will reel it in. In these drops you can get things like health, ammo, shields, which we'll get to later, and points. You can also rack up points by killing enemies. Once you completed the wave, you get a result screen with your current amount of credits on it. In between levels, you can use these credits on the upgrade screen. Here's where you can buy more power-ups, new weapons, and restore health and ammo before heading to the next level. In these upgrade screens, Sam will also give a little bit of exposition about his mission, or just make some jokes. Ask the High Priest if they join the fight now! He told me I should stop eating meat. I bit him. Diplomatic relations deteriorated from there. This next level marks the very first appearance of the Space Mummy, later becoming a standard enemy in Series Sam 4. The Last Hope was a first for a lot of things that would later be adapted, like the Sagittarian Sidewinder. <laughs>
sometimes if you look behind you, you'll see some interesting visuals like the statue of Nefertari, which is supposed to be lost in Jewel of the Nile, but I guess Sam just kind of walked past it and forgot about it, unless this is a completely different one. You might have noticed that some weapons have a laser attachment and some don't. I prefer to divide these into three categories, hit scan, spread, and travel weapons. Hit scan weapons have a laser on them to help see where you're shooting. Spread weapons like shotguns, though still hit scan, don't have a laser attachment. And travel weapons like most laser guns and energy weapons don't have a laser either, with the exception of the Devastator and the Rocket Launcher. While we're talking about the weapons, I'd like to point out some attention to detail on them. They're all very high quality and some even have some secrets on them, like the Tommy Gun which has the release dates of all the major Serious Sam releases, and the Minigun which has a No Gnar symbol on it. If you look closely, you can even find text on the minigun referring to the fact that this is a sentry weapon, not meant to be a handheld. On the very last wave, you get to do a boss fight. The boss for Earth is a giant space mummy. The majority of bosses can be summarized by... It's a Quango clone. You're pretty stationary, and the boss creeps closer, and from time to time you have to shoot debris out of the sky. That's all there is to it. Man! I hope they never send me back to Egypt! Pladeon, an industrial planet that reminds me a little bit of Kronor. We're here because an anomaly started pulling the Saratoga out of orbit and we have to find it and stop it. Pladeon doesn't really introduce new mechanics, it does bring new enemies though, like the clone soldiers, drones, witch pride, and... Leave me alone! <laughs> this also marks the reappearance of an old enemy, the rollerballs from Sirius Sam 2. The entirety of Pladeon is kind of like taking off the training wheels. This first level is the industrial complex. This time you start with both the light laser pistol and the deagle. I don't know why, but I really like this level. I think it reminds me of those old arcade shooters. You know, the one where you had a plastic gun and you'd play as some cop shooting through hundreds of bad guys for a high score, but you weren't actually ever playing, you just acted like it while the 25 cent text kept flashing. Good times. Next is the botanical gardens. I don't really have much to say about it, except I hate marsh hoppers. The Highway to Hell is a pretty cool level. It shows off a little more of the planet and how they lived. This is also where you encounter the Knoom. And the final level brings it all together in what I would say is my second favorite boss fight. You start this mission on a rising platform and after shooting some aliens you get to the top, after which the anomaly rises from the ground. And before I go on, I want to give a shout out to the soundtrack. Damien just does not miss. And though all of that is really positive, the boss itself is hampered a little by the fact that it's pretty much a reskin of the mummy. The only positive difference is that if you hurt it for long enough, it'll shield itself with debris. But you can shoot this debris to create an opening for yourself, which is a really cool idea. Oh no! Oh dear! Ah! Hey, you! They're finally awake. Post editing SQ here. Remember when the prompt showed up that said I couldn't show you the domesticated spider army because I hadn't unlocked it yet? Well, your boy went on a winning streak and got some sweet ass gadgets. And the best part is they stack, so here they are. They are absolutely just molesting those arachnoids. I love how they all say stop resisting. <laughs> This is casual police brutality, dude. It's fun to watch this, but I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how I feel about it, because from time to time, well, actually, quite often, they let things slip through, so... Miniguns are fun, but... Nah. I think I best just keep it at one. See, I normally have a fear of spiders. Like, I genuinely hate them, but, but this shit makes me love it, dude. Look at this! Dude, this is freaking awesome. Oh dear! Bro, they just absolutely molest anything they come across. <laughs> that was all I really wanted to show you guys, so back to the video. Shanti is the first planet to introduce new mechanics, specifically three new ones. There's the Syrian laser swords, the sniper, and the shield. 
The swords basically turn you into Virgil from Devil May Cry as you send out energy waves. It's really handy when dealing with the new enemy type. They're just called skeletons, but they're a more humanoid version of the clear, and they wield a sword and shield. They're really most comparable to the primates from Serious Sam 2. I also want to mention the fact that the swords are perfect against drones. When you hit a cluster of them, it's just so satisfying. You do have a limited use of the energy waves, and your swords will go from blue to red once depleted, though they charge back up pretty fast. When your swords are red though, you can still use them as regular swords if an enemy gets too close. And the blades themselves can deflect projectiles, so if you're good with it, you can deflect shots right back at the enemy. Next is the Sniper. It has a huge scope to compensate for VR, and it's pretty powerful and shoots really fast, though I find most of its use in the first two levels of Shanti. It's best used to take out another new enemy, the Sniper. They function the same as in Serious Sam 4, they point the laser at you and shoot. Sometimes the game will spawn a lot of these guys, and that's where the shield comes in. If you press the grab button on your controllers, you'll activate your shield. It can be activated in both hands, but it depletes pretty quickly if you do that. I find that if you just shield yourself from the front side, you're pretty much good. The shields not only block attacks from projectiles as well as direct attacks, they can also deflect shots back to the enemy. We're on Shanti to find some new super weapon that Mental's been creating and to make contact with the natives. The majority of Shanti's levels are very samey, it's just temple after temple. They sure have a lot of temples around here. The third level does bring a new enemy type, the Space Fighter. They do strafing runs with rockets, they're not too hard to deal with. The final boss sees you on a moving platform and some flying islands. Seems familiar. Anyway, the boss shows up right at the start, a space dragon. He has these little crystals on them, and if you shoot the crystals off, you'll deal some damage to him. Though every time you break off a crystal, it'll send some homing energy balls at you. You'll also be fighting other enemies in between taking shots at the dragon. The Zumble also returns, and we also get introduced to the Mind Bomber and Fleet Fighter. The Bomber sends homing mines your way, and the Fleet Fighter is just a faster version of the drones. They always seem to fly in such intricate patterns. Here you can see I got distracted by a pretty butterfly. Finally, you'll reach the end of the ride and you can finish off the dragon. By the way, if you look at Sam's Natrixa page in Serious Sam 4, it references this fight. Saratoga, you reading me? Couldn't find the natives, but I took out the super weapon. Let that archaeologist guy know. Just send him a fax or something. And tell the cook we're having chicken tonight. Valtos. I'm very conflicted about this planet. I love certain parts, but I absolutely hate others. The part I hate the most, though, is this first level. First, we get a new weapon, the bow. The bow has two modes, regular arrows and explosive arrows. The handling of the bow is... alright. As somebody who was pretty big into archery, I had my own compound bow, the handling just seems so... exaggerated. It's like the slightest movement of your pulling hand offsets the shot by miles. I know it's a problem with the fact that this is VR and it's completely weightless, but damn, it bugs me. My real problem comes from the new enemy type, the Siren. Fighting these guys is like playing whack-a-mole. They jump around throwing stuff at you and you have to consistently lead your shots. That wouldn't be a problem if I had explosive arrows to do splash damage. But you only start out with regular arrows for quite a while until you get an ammo drop. But to be honest, I think I just need to get good. The second level is this complex with a crash ship in the center. Nothing really new happens, but the third level is absolutely great. You start on a raft in the swamp, and you have to take out these aliens while you move to this ancient tree that kind of looks like a great old one from Demon Souls. But what I really love is that halfway through, the boss just shows up in the background. Yeah, that's the Swamp High from Sirius Sam 4. So once you get to the end of the ride, you get this visual of spiders coming down this infested tree, and it just looks really, really cool. Finally, the last level in my favorite boss fight takes place on top of a dam. First you take out a bunch of enemies, and then out of nowhere the Swamp Hive just shows up. Occasionally it'll either try to hit you or send out beetles that are easy to kill. It's still just a shoot it till it dies situation, but that visual when you beat him and you watch him fall off the dam is just amazing. This is going to be an interesting mission report. Arcadia Minor was the bane of my existence for a while because of how bullshit the last level was, though now looking back on it, it's not that bad. Arcadia Minor doesn't introduce new weapons or mechanics, but it does give you some new enemies to play with, like this guy. And guess what he is? He's a man, and he shoots lightning. Wanna guess what his name is? 
Lightning Man. Also, the Colopsy are back. I hate these guys. We're on Arcadia Minor for a diplomatic mission to get the natives to join the fight against Mental. The first mission sees us on a beach where we get attacked. This time, we start with the bow, deagles, and rocket launcher. Outside of the new enemies, here's that first appearance of the Sidewinder again. The second level takes place on this really good looking meadow. There's castle ruins all around and, oh look at that, an enemy spaceship. This isn't foreshadowing anything at all. The third level goes absolutely buck wild with enemy spawns, but it's nothing you can't handle. I want to take this time again to shout at the soundtrack. The song for this level is awesome. Oh hey, what's this? The spaceship? You thought the spaceship was going to be the final boss? Here on Arcadia Minor, you get the two-for-one special. Anyway, the spaceship isn't too hard to beat. It doesn't have any weak spots, so you can shoot it anywhere. Shout out to having two bosses on one planet, though. That shit's wicked. In the next upgrade screen, you learn that there's an elemental god beneath Arcadia Minor that the natives have been praying to. Problem is, that elemental was put there by Mental. So we're going to go kill it. And as the final level of the campaign, you know shit's about to get wild. Do you want 12 arachnoids? How about 30 snipers? Or maybe 100 fleet fighters? This is absolute bullshit. When the elemental finally wakes up from his beauty nap, all he does is scoot closer and throw debris at you periodically. And sometimes the debris just straight up misses, like it doesn't even come close to hitting me. I have my devastators completely upgraded, so the boss itself is just a cakewalk. Technological modernity, bitches! Okay, now I just have to tell the High Priest that I killed his god. I'm getting good at this diplomacy thing. So before I give my final thoughts, I'd like to go a little bit more into the Endless Arena mode. You start with some basic weapons and you get everything else via supply drops, so there's no buying weapons, you just need to get them from a drop. Same goes for power-ups. Power-ups are visible via the Sirius Damage logo, and your weapons come from this metal crate, which is just the metal crate from Sirius Sam 2 without the caution tape around it. Kinda looks weird. And finally, for those of us like me that enjoy the war soundtracks, this game sadly doesn't have any originals, it just uses the pre-existing ones from 3BFE. So, in the end it looks like The Last Hope is a pretty good game. It has a little impact on the overall narrative of the series, and it's an extra adventure for those of us that have a VR set. I would highly recommend getting The Last Hope if you do have a VR set. You can either buy it for $30 on its own, or you can get the VR pack for $60. Bucks. The VR pack includes The Last Hope, First and Second Encounter, and 3 BFE VR. You're bound to get at least a couple hours out of it, which is a pretty decent time for VR. Unless you're like me, who'd like to spend 8 hours straight drying my eyeballs out with a screen taped to my face. 